Hi guys. Now this is my showy Neotech uh, crash helmet, which I've had a couple of years. Uh, I bought it uh, to go with my MT10 actually, with the uh, Night Fluoro uh, wheels. Uh, you can probably see a couple of obvious things stuck to it. In the front, I've got my GoPro. I mean, for years I've just been filming the odd ride with a GoPro stuck on the front of the helmet, but the obvious thing you get just with the GoPro on the front of the helmet is horrible audio with wind noise. I mean, it's a fairly windy day today. You can probably hear the wind uh, by this camera, which is uh, I'm recording on a GoPro 5. So uh, what I've done, I've, uh, I've gone and bought a, an external audio lead and uh, I've actually fastened it in, which is a little bit of a difficult job on... Uh, on a flip front helmet so you can see I can still get at my flip front here I'm going to just press that down and I've got my uh, my interphone F5 on the side there uh, so I can talk to uh, talk to my wife while we're riding she rides her own bike so uh, that's a must really it's been great while we've been touring uh, but it's it's quite difficult to get cabling in and make a, a neat job. I know there's bits of sticky tape but that's just to stop the cable from uh, flapping around uh, while I'm riding. Uh, normally I'd take it off and you're just left with a little a little clip on the side of the helmet and that disconnects from the cable inside the helmet there. It just goes through that uh, skirt there. So um, it's fairly easy to, uh, to bring it back to pretty much standard. And what I've done inside, I don't know if you can see there, because I've tried it several times now and uh, with varying uh, different results, the audio has still not been fantastic. So what I've done, I've put the uh, the microphone inside uh, a bit of fluffy stuff. I think they call it a dead cat, but uh, it's not an actual cat, obviously. <laughs> but uh, I'm hoping it's going to give me reasonable audio. So. What I'm going to do is just take a local ride out. I'm going to show you a couple of the areas that's been improved around here because we're a, a former big mining area and uh, I'll show you some of the things that they've uh, done local to us here uh, to, uh, to help improve the area. Okay, well, hopefully the audio is coming through better than, uh, than it was before. It's a really windy day today. I've got my visor up at the moment, so... Uh, Oh, look at all those leaves down. Well, here we are at Conkers, heart of the National Forest, at the Waterside Centre. It's very local to me, so uh, we often come walking around here. So this is the canal basin at Conker's waterside. Just used to be fields at one point. Over there used to be uh, the um, yard where they used to fix all the national coal board vehicles uh, for Rawdon Pit. And this was the actual uh, train yard here. And uh, this was in operation until uh, the early 80s. Uh, just past the playground there there's a tunnel and uh, the other side of there is the main conkers um, the main conkers center uh, it's quite a uh, tourist attraction now right anyway onward Years 
ago my family actually used to farm that land there before all the trees are on it so different now maybe uh, my old dad wouldn't reckon recognize it now the canal there is still not connected up to the main uh, canal network but there are plans to do it when and if they find the money But this whole scheme is all part of the new national forest and uh, I'm lucky enough to live in the middle of this uh, sort of big experiment really, you know, when we first started seeing the trees going in we didn't think it was going to be up to much but uh, now there's more and more tourists coming in every year and uh, this to what was a uh, an industrial area at one point you know it was just pits everywhere you know we've got uh, the Rawdon pit here we've got uh, Donisthorpe pit over that way we've got Meesham pit we've got Cadley Hill it was just just mining everywhere and basically when I left school uh, all my school friends uh, went into uh, into mining you know went down the pit that's what you did you know, I choose not to, but uh, most people did. Now down here, I'll take you uh, to to Moira Furnace, which is just a short walking distance from uh, from Conkers, and uh, the canal, which has been opened up, which you saw back there, comes through up here. It crosses the road just up there, actually. The Moora Furnace was a, a tumble down area for years we used to play around as a kid nobody wanted to visit it up here it was derelict in fact I used to ride an old scramble around on the uh, what used to be the dirt road which is now the canal up there yeah nobody used to bother but uh, but now it's a uh, it's all been uh, done up and turned into uh, turned into a nice tourist attraction and while there were excavating here they found all the old uh, lime kilns and uh, it is it's worth a visit just up there is the lime kilns that they uncovered during the excavations more a furnace here just up the top there you can probably just see the canal the Moira canal barge which goes all the way up that way and the canal goes up up to Donisthorpe where it stops and unfortunately doesn't join the network so you don't see many barges coming along but uh, in time there's uh, there's plans to join it to uh, to the main canal network at Shackerston I hope it happens Nice cafe there. I mean, some of these trees were here before, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll take you up the road and show you to the main area where they've been planting trees, and they've literally been planting millions of them. It's quite uh, a feat what they've done up there and I'm going to take you up to uh, Hicks Lodge which is just between Moira and Ashby de la Zouche. Take your time basically round here if they weren't uh, undermining all the houses round here by taking seams of coal out you know one minute your house would be leaning one way and the next week it'd be leaning another way round here everybody got used to it but uh, you know if they weren't digging coal out from under it they were open casting it and they were either taking the coal out the top or underneath or they were taking uh, clay out all the housing built over this side here that's built on what was the old Hetworth pipe site 
and uh, they used to use the clay that was dug out the ground here. I'll show you this plaque here actually. I don't know if you can see the plaque from the GoPro. Oop. Let's find neutral. This tree marks the heart of the National Forest. And the tree was planted in uh, 1992. So it's not doing too bad. Although you can see the scar at the bottom of it. Probably about six or seven years ago, a, uh, a youth in a car came flying around this corner, didn't make it wiped the uh, sign out and took a big chunk out of the tree but uh, luckily the old oak is uh, it survived and making a recovery so hopefully it'll still turn into a fine specimen so yeah 1992 was when this was all first set up so we're uh, heading up Wilsley Woodside Road now and uh, I'll show you Hicks Lodge site it's just up here I'm hoping the, uh, the wind noise isn't too bad now from the uh, microphone, but uh, see until I get back and uh, listen to it. I have no idea how, uh, how good it sounds or how bad it sounds. So just over this uh, railway bridge here is Hicks Lodge. We've actually been up here today uh, walking. This is uh, the Hicks Lodge Visitor Centre and it's, uh, it's a nice cafe and uh, cycle hire just there and we've been up and had lunch here and all the way across there you can see a lake all the way across as far as you can see is part of the new national forest and this was just one gigantic open cast pit here. Amazing, the transformation, absolutely amazing. Attracts lots and lots of visitors, lots of people on cycles. I mean, the wood on the slight hillside over there, that, that is an old wood, but the rest of, the rest of this area over here is it's all, it's all new. I used to come up here and play around him. It was just a huge open cast hole, clay hole for a start and the open casted coal here as well and, he, and then they used it as part of a tip it was just a right mess at one point but anyway that's uh i thought i'd show you quickly round so that's it really uh, i'll catch up with you guys again hopefully with a tour vid we're heading to uh heading to grand canaria in a few weeks so i wanted to try out the uh the microphone setup before we head there And if you are interested in uh, seeing what it's like to ride in Grand Canaria, there are uh, there are some uh, videos way back on my channel from uh, uh, a year ago and, and the year before that when we went, but uh, with lousy audio, or if you really want to see how a professional vlogger uh, does Grand Canaria, you want to check out uh, the Missing and Flyers trip there. We're going with the same company, Canary Motorcycle Tours, so uh, really looking forward to it. I mean, uh, riding riding over there in the winter in Grand Canary is just it's just fabulous. It's just like riding on a, a summer day, and hopefully we'll get some uh, get some decent weather as well. Uh, hoping to take the drone as well, so uh, we shall see. Obviously I'm only going to operate the drone where uh, I think it's illegal and safe to do so, which is uh, 
becoming more and more difficult these days. Oh, it looks like it's going to rain. I think we'll head back. I'll catch you guys later. Cheerio.